No, just use the lavalier. That way it's like nice and consistent. It's like I talk oh. in the shop with the same voice that I talk with, or the same like microphone that I talk with in the voiceover. So it sounds really consistent the whole way through. Well, hell, give Derek your Yeti Pro. True. Yeah, Derek, you want it? Sure. <laughs> okay. Bring it to work. Bitch. That out. Yeah. yeah. yeah I is it, it an XLR or is it USB? No, it's USB. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get this. Let's get this okay. uh, show on the road. Enough screwing around. In three, two, one. Welcome to Off the Cut, a podcast where we talk about building, making, and answering all of your questions. I'm Eric from Spensley Design Co. And I'm Zach from Zach Builds. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, you can send it to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. You can find both of us on YouTube, Instagram, and unfortunately, because we have to keep up with kids, you can find us on TikTok too. All right, now let's get into the show. That random blip of Ooh. static just means that you've entered Off the Cut episode 96. <laughs> Did that play in... for everybody else? I heard I it. You heard it. Okay. Because there's been other times in the past where it's gone off, and I swear I've been the only one who's heard it. So I'm glad you mentioned it. Okay. It Derek, doesn't did show you hear up. It? I didn't hear it. Oh. It doesn't show up in the actual recordings. It's only in the stream for like half a second. It's the weirdest thing. Oh, well. Oh. I thought it was a little Easter egg. Anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Episode 96. We're up in Toronto and here in Ohio today is known as Thursday, January 4th, 20. Oh, not 2023. It's 2024. 2024. Happy New Year. Which means the Green Series podcast, the worst podcast available on Apple and Spotify, still sucks. Mm -hmm. But you know what doesn't suck, Zach? KM Tools, baby. KM Tools. (laughs) Actually, I need to I need to talk to Jonathan. You know yeah, why? Yeah, that? No. Because we got to pick a new winner for the $50 giveaway card. That's right. It's a new month, which means a new winner. Yeah. So we'll do that later. But before, yes. Zach, tell people about uh, KM Tools. Why, why is KM Tools cool? Well, KM Tools is the best tool company out there. Jonathan doesn't like when I make claims like that you know he's like you know you got to temper it but i'm just going to go ahead and say that they are the best tool company out there because they make all of their tools themselves or if they well they don't make all the tools but if they do have the tools in the store it's because they either made them themselves or they use them in their shop wow that was (laughs) to succinctly say it if it's in their store it's in their shop yes yes thank you right it really right. helps to read things off a page, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> right. So it's for woodworkers, by woodworkers, and a portion of the profits go directly to the Cats Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. And like I hinted at earlier, every single month, Jonathan's giving away a $50 gift card to KM Tools. All you have to do, sign up on Patreon. You're automatically entered to win. Nothing else. Love it. Well, with that said, should we give away the gift card now? We got to start the year off with something good. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's do it with a little giveaway. That's fun. All right. Okay. So I downloaded, right before the show, I downloaded all the people on oh. Patreon. Oh, I thought you had like a big wheel and you had every patron's name and then you were going to spin it really fast. Oh, like click, 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 yeah. click, like We need like a, right or whatever. like a click thing. We need that sound yeah. effect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can fake it. We're doing a podcast only if small percentage of people actually watch live yeah so so i basically i have an excel spreadsheet and then depending on the tier that you're in is how many entries you get and Mm -hmm. so the obviously the more entries you have the higher likelihood that you have of winning so what i have to do to randomize it is i refresh the excel Mm -hmm. sheet so tell me uh derek tell me how many times you want me to refresh the excel sheet Let's go with three. That's a good okay. number. One, two, three. The winner of the $50 gift card this month is Don Patterson at oh, yeah. What's Next Woodworking. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to write that down. Don, I, we will be in contact with you and get you out that uh, get you out that gift card. Nice. So yeah. we can pop up some tools. Right. I wish we could do this just all episode, like just like give away gift does. card after gift card. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Give oh, away that'd be fun. cars. 
homes. Yeah. How big of a YouTube? I mean, Mr. Beast does it, right? You ever yeah. see one of his videos? He's just giving away money and cars and stuff like that. So we just need to get our YouTube channels, you know, 100x bigger than they are right now. <laughs> it's and a then small we feat. To... Yeah, it's a small feat. It's doable, though. Right. It's right. the best and resolution it... of the year. It's not a it's not a million x. It's a hundred x. It's like it's within the realm of possibility. But see, you're talking about our YouTube channels to being able to give away things. I'm talking about the podcast. The podcast would have to grow up like a million x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. But look, if we're both if we both have YouTube channels where we're just giving away Teslas all the time, I think we can kick some stuff down to the podcast just for funsies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just make it a write off. Everything's yeah, exactly. right off. Writing everything off. Ooh, I was like, uh, January 31st, I just bought as many supplies as I could. December 31st. Day. Yeah, sorry, December 31st, yes. I was just trying to get in as many expenses as I could before the end of the year. So I bought like three projects forwards worth of materials and stuff. Ooh. So let me ask you, you've been talking about this for a while now. Did you order your uh, Festival Domino? No, I didn't. I <laughs> I cheaped out and I went with the uh, I went with a dowel jig, but I got a pretty did, nice one. Which one did you get? Uh oh, dang it! I I took it to the shop today and did you I get the one remember. that Scott's got? It's I got didn't get that one. Um, oh man, I can't remember the name. It's not the dowel max one. It's not one of these cheapy plastic ones. It's actually like a good solid metal self centering yeah. thing. It comes with like five or six metal pegs um oh, damn i can't remember the name of it i don't have it here otherwise i'd just check was it was it the jessam one wasn't the jessam one uh, but it's, it's a quality one it's not like a little you know rinky dink one you're gonna find at home depot yeah exactly exactly uh it actually looks very similar to the to the woodpeckers one but it's not maybe it's a knockoff of the woodpeckers i didn't know woodpeckers had a dowling jig yeah, Dowling Jig. Well, I, gotta... I know. Maybe this is a new tool. Was it from Timu? <laughs> no, it wasn't from Timu. By the way, Timu offered to sponsor a YouTube video of mine right around the end of the year, and I did a bunch of research into them. I was like, you know what? Not for me. Not. I don't. I yeah, don't know. I got the same offer as well. Yeah, but it just seemed. Did you get the one where they wanted you to do like dedicated video about the tools or was it like an ad read? No, it was an ad read. It was like a 90 second integration, but even still, I got I both. Think, yeah. Oh, you got both. Oh, yeah. And I know I've, I'm not going to call anybody else out, but I know that another prominent YouTuber I saw did the ad read and their comment section was nothing but you should be ashamed of yourself for promoting yeah. Timu and stuff yeah. like that. So I was like, Oh, I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. Yeah. And I was actually, that was a big part of the reason I didn't do it. I might order off Timu for myself, knowing that there's like a, you know, a 80% chance that whatever I'm going to, is going to be crap, you know, like, especially like your yeah. electronic components. I buy a lot of stuff off AliExpress, which is basically the same thing. Right. And I do it with the understanding that I might very well get a defective product on the other side, but that is not something that I want to advertise on my channel. You know, like I don't feel like putting my name behind something like that. It seemed like most of the disinterest of, of Timu comes from people saying that they like have are notorious for stealing and like reselling people's credit card information. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that I have oh. no information to back that up other than anecdotal comments that I'd seen sure. in sure. in the aforementioned person's uh, YouTube video. The thing that I've seen people complain about a lot is that they gamify shopping. Like they have, you know, spin the roulette wheel and you'll get 10% off your next order. It's like all these little hooks that they build into their app in order to make it as addictive as possible, which I'm not a huge fan of either. You said something. Sorry, Derek. Do you say something? Oh, I said that would just be annoying. Yeah. It's yeah. also, yeah, horrible user experience. <laughs> right. And I, I mean, but so many other places do that. Like if you think, and we're, I'm, we're not trying to get into any, any debates here, but like the, the sports betting industry or whatever, they're totally. like, oh, 
open yeah. this account. They give you a 500 bucks or whatever. Like, That's, yeah, good point. It's good a point. business. They're, they're trying to pull you in. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if Timu is doing this tactic to try to get people to buy things, it's obviously working, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, it's the whole mobile game industry is basically based on a similar concept, right? Just try right. to keep people hooked for as long as you can. Right. And or the freemium games free to download. Yeah. And then once exactly. you get past level three, it's like, oh, but do you want this like these coins that are required basically to proceed? Oh, you got to pay us four ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you struggled with doing the sports betting one like you thought you thought about it for a while, right? I did. Yeah. 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 And it's it's I mean, I think it's a, something that you have to consider whenever working with any brand, you know, just because they're willing to give you money doesn't necessarily mean it's something you want to kind of align yourself with. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I totally I totally agree. But so what else did, did you buy any other tools, anything ex that you're excited about? Uh, didn't buy one. I'm in talks with a company right now, about potentially getting a laser. We talked about that a little bit, but, uh, I've gotten down that road a little yeah. bit more. And you know me, I, I would love what I, I'd love to add as many tools to my collection that make the trolls as angry as possible. Oh so. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, let's be honest, the laser would be freaking sweet. Exactly. Right. The one I'm looking at getting, uh, will cut through up to three quarter thick wood. I'm assuming this is the X tool. Yeah, it's the yeah. it's like one of the high, there's two. I think it's like the second from the highest X tool. Yeah. So my main. Now, have you done like, research on this thing? Like, is is it a good one? I've done a little bit of research. Probably I should do a little bit more. But it, X tool kind of operates in this weird zone where it's like they don't have many. I would call it enthusiast grade hardware. It's more okay. than your. So it's like of, an X-Carve, basically, like CNC, X-Carve, CNC. Yeah, yeah, great analogy. Either there there are tons of lasers that are better, but they're also, you know, $20,000 machines that belong sure. in a factory. Sure. And then there's tons of machines that are $200, and they're just good for engraving cutting boards. Sure. This is kind of like in a weird middle zone, and they don't have too many competitors. I've been trying to research some other ones, but... Yeah, so it, it kind of feels like a good fit for me, but there's not too much to cross shop it against. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. You yeah. should. Do, do you know uh, Pete uh, Pete Kapar from Petrie's Workshop? No, I don't. Oh, I was gonna say uh, I'll introduce you to him at WorkbenchCon. He he knows yeah. a lot of laser stuff. He does like a lot of like Etsy orders and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So yeah. uh, it might be something worth. I mean, I know that's three months from now, but you hmm. could. I'm talk fine. shop on lasers like obviously he's well versed in it so you could be like what am i what do i want to look for what i want to avoid like yeah here's what yeah. i'm thinking about doing because i know you have like the diode lasers you have the co2 lasers and i think yeah. there's one more if i'm not mistaken uh yeah there is another one i can't remember what it is off the top of my head the one i'm looking at is a diode laser okay okay yeah so what do you look what would you want to do with that are you gonna like laser cut wood uh, plastics, fabrics, veneers, what are we talking? Great question. So uh, don't have a great answer for you right off the bat. Um, I was definitely looking at it to do some cool engraving, but the idea of laser cutting also sounds kind of cool to me. Like make knockdown furniture, or I guess maybe knockdown is not the right yeah. term, but like puzzle piece furniture almost with it. Because one right. of the biggest well, not the biggest complaints I have about using a CNC, but it is your resolution is limited by the size of your bit, right? So you can't do things like finger joints with a CNC, or at least you have to overcarve them in weird ways. Or yeah, there's yeah, all these like, like a, little yeah, like a relief yeah, all these hole little... in the corner. Exactly. There's all these little hacky workarounds with a laser carve or a laser cutter, you could actually be accurate enough that you can just do finger joints, dovetails, all these little things. So. I think it'd be really funny to make, you know, something with a really elegant looking dovetail and be like, I didn't use a chisel to make that at all. I just laser cut the pieces. Oh, that would make people so mad. So angry, right? So. And like the fact that you could just get. Derek, I think you got to go up one bump. Or move the mic up a little bit. Yeah. How's, how's that? Oh, that's good. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Sorry. One more time, Derek. I didn't catch that. Do you have a CNC? Oh yeah, I have a CNC. I have the X-Carve Pro. Okay. 
So yeah. I've seen on some of them, they'll have where you can swap out the router Ooh. with a laser. Do you have that option? Yes. I have looked into that, and that is an option. However, you then have to do quite a bit of setup. So wow. anytime you're swapping between a cutting head and the laser, you are also hooking up like a, a secondary control box. It seemed like a lot of extra work. Um, mm. And it's kind of in the realm of, I think, especially when a company is basically offering me to 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 give me one it's like well right. i might as well get separate tools and then have them yeah for, yeah it seems like a joinder planer combo they work yeah but wouldn't you if space were space and money were no option you would yes. probably rather have separate tools exactly exactly yeah the swap over and i think you know planer joiner combo there it's like a th couple minutes to swap yeah. from one to the other this, I, it was kind of looking like it's going to be like a 25 minute round trip anytime you wanted to go back mm. and forth between the two. So not really the best use of my time. My yeah. other concern would be with the laser, don't you have to exhaust the fumes? Because it's effectively a controlled burn, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? Yeah. So the one I'm looking at has like a filtration system built into it. Um, so it exhausts into the room, but it pushes it through a HEPA filter or something like okay, that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. A lot of considerations to have. A lot of considerations. And also, you know, like this is might just be my gateway drug into lasering. <laughs> so you might come, we might be having this discussion again next year and I'll be getting one of these giant machines. <laughs> Get a plasma CNC. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, I got to cut plate steel, obviously. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, you you got to batch out bar stools and stuff like that, and you're cutting yeah. into half inch thick plate steel, and you're like, yeah, I yeah. just burned it out in twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be sweet to have, though. It would be right, and a big water jet too. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But ooh, that, you know, I'm not even I like I'm familiar with what they are and how they work, but I'm not familiar enough to know like what when would I want a plasma CNC versus when would I want a laser jet or a water yeah. jet i don't know yeah i don't know either that's a great question yeah or i gotta talk to some people in production a lot of exciting stuff uh, so any other tools you got the the dowling jig you bought a bunch of supplies and you maybe you're getting a laser yeah i don't think any other tools i bought all the well it's kind of a tool uh so one project i want to tackle in the new year is making my own custom nas or like network yeah, attached yeah. storage yeah. so I've been running a box in the closet of my room for a little while now, and I want to make myself a custom one, essentially from the ground up, so that I can have more control Ooh. over it, so it can be more powerful. Uh, so I bought all the parts for that. So that's kind of a tool, but it's also, you know, like a little techie project type of thing. So for the people who are listening that have no idea what that is, Ooh, yes, tell them, because question. I also have one. Yes. So a NAS is network attached, attached storage. So basically, to simplify it, it's like having a bunch of hard drives connected to the internet that you can access from anywhere. Right. Um, but it also allows you to do other fun things. Like one thing that I've been researching lately is running my own media server on it. So basically, I would have my own private version of Netflix that would have all of my media, all my movies, all my TV shows that I could access from anywhere and I could just stream it from there. All legally um, downloaded. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. wink. <laughs> um, what else? I could basically have my own version of Dropbox. So I yeah. could have files syncing across all my devices. Um, I was talking with Bryson earlier about it. I could actually set up a virtual machine on this new server. So I could have like Windows or Mac OS running on it and yeah. then we could both edit directly on the server from anywhere in the world so you could basically log in with your phone and render a video and it would do it all the work on the actual server oh, itself so neat. i'm i'm trying to find a bunch of different use cases so that i can kind of and then this and then this in the video <laughs> i get that i said and then for everybody else listening the reason i have one is because when you make youtube videos and record stuff um, you can get a terabyte, which is a thousand gigabytes of yeah. footage and file space real fast. Oh, so if, yeah. if I'm making, you know, 
five, 10, 15 YouTube videos, the hard drive on my computer is going to fill up like instantly. Yeah. So yeah. what what Zach and I do is we run these basically like massive hard drives. Like mine is, yeah. I think mine's 90 or a hundred terabytes yeah. of um, storage. And then it's also set up in this configuration called RAID, which I'm, I know I'm simplifying this. You basically think of all of these individual hard drives are connected together. And then they all have like small copies of one another's data on them. So that if one were to just fail or whatever, you haven't lost your data. It's like a yeah. redundancy backup safeguard thing. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So the one I think I'll have like 80 terabytes in this new one when it's done. And with the option to add as many more disks I want to, I kind of sky's the limit when you're making your own, right? Yeah, yeah. That'd yeah. be exciting. People are going to love that too. I hope so. I hope so. And, the, oh, and the, the other thing is um, if you're paying somebody else for cloud storage, like, you know, think about having a professional Dropbox account. To have 10 terabytes of storage with Dropbox, That's a lot. it's going to cost... It's going to cost you, you know, 50, 60 bucks a month or something like that. Or Google Drive. Well, I'm sure more than that. You know. So there is a little bit of a cost savings if you're willing to put in the time to set one up yourself. And speed. It'll be faster for you. That's true. That's true. And right. it's, you know, c contained on site. You know, if uh, I, you know, if something breaks on, I know how to fix it and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. That's so exciting. That's what you do if your house burns down. <laughs> well, then you have what Eric has, which I don't, which is off-site backup. Yeah, I have off-site backup. It's so cheap. That's I, I don't understand how off-site storage is so cheap, and then like cloud storage is so expensive. It's probably about half the speed at which you can access the information. Yeah. I bet the, yeah. the off-site storage is slower than like your Dropbox would be. Yeah, yeah. So what does I'll, Backblaze charge you, Eric? Do you know? That's what I'm internet? looking up right now. I'm looking up my okay. billing. Um, I think here, isn't it? Uh, mine's $189. That's crazy. Oh, oh so, hold on. That, but that's for two years. So yeah, like about 100 bucks a year. 100 bucks. Yeah. So I, I've just been buying hard drives. I was buying 10 terabyte drives for about 250, or well, about 200 bucks American. Yeah. So they've essentially must have a server somewhere with, well, how, how, and how, what's your limit in terms of terabytes with Backblaze? Is it unlimited? unlimited. So, but doesn't it restrict you for, you can't do NAS backups with it? No, I can. You can? Okay. Uh -huh. I thought it restricted those. So they've well, got mine a server technically somewhere. isn't network attached. Mine's te technically just yeah. a RAID external drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. D direct attached storage. I think they call yeah. that. Yeah. Um, same idea though, really. Um, but so Backblaze must have a server with, let's say you have 50 terabytes of data, five $300 hard drives dedicated to just you, Eric, and they yeah. charge you to a hundred bucks a year for that. I, I wonder what the, how did the economics of that work out for them? They must get help on their hardware. I guess, but when you get to the enterprise grade, the drives actually get more expensive. Like, I'm just using consumer drives. They use, like, crazy helium-filled drives and stuff. That's true. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. I mean, I obviously, mean, they're making money. Anybody who... I am not sponsored by them whatsoever. I pay a full price for it. Anybody who's looking for, you know, just a, a what-if backup, it's especially yeah. for what, what we do, Yeah, it's a small price to pay for just a, a what-if scenario. Hey, right. do you think they call it Backblaze because it's what in case your house burns down? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Got it right there with the name. It could be. It could be. Well, so Derek, did you get any any uh, tools, anything you're excited for for uh, around the new year, for Christmas or whatever? Um, yeah, but um, we can talk about that between. Oh, uh, oh, I got gotcha. you. It's a secret. Yeah. It's a secret. Yeah, super secret. But uh, no, it's, it's a uh, you know, other than that, it's pretty fairly uneventful Christmas. Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, what about you, Eric? You got the fest tool shirt on. You got any new fest tools? No, this is this is from doing the <laughs> shop talk podcast thing or whatever. Lucy yeah, sent me over. Saying... It's a nice shirt. 
It's a nice I shirt. I know. I know. I like, I'm just harassing you. I know. I know. No, I'm saying it's uh, it's nice and comfy. But so I wanted to I wanted to bring this up. Uh, okay. It's the new year. Mm-hmm. Actually, I want to do this really quick. You know how everybody gives you those Spotify wrapped things? That oh, everybody, yeah. Everyone posts. Yeah. And everybody's like, look at the music I listen to. And no one cares, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to tell you guys the Spotify wrapped for our podcast. And I haven't oh, looked at it. So it's, it's you know, this little, this girl yeah, guy here. Oh, have you looked? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't even know. You guys should text to okay. me. Okay. Uh, I'm loading. This is being definitely not stalling right now. This I'm is great. 60, uh, later this week, so this works out great. <laughs> and 100 um, percent. okay here we go okay. 2020 2023 wrapped for off the cut podcast baby a wrapped is here let's go uh people really feeling what we do apparently All i right. love these wrap things you have to scroll through like five pages of bs before you get to the real yeah. stats Re- ready to take it from the top speaking of your top your top episode was what do you think it is Ooh, Ooh. got to be a guest one. Maybe uh, Cats Who? Moses, was that in 2023 or was that 2022? No, episode 000, our first oh, episode, what? which makes sense because a lot of people, I, I think, guess, start yeah. from the beginning. True, true. Okay, yeah. it was streamed 181% more than your average episode. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Let's hear it for the new fans. Mm-hmm. 79% of your listeners discovered you in 2023. So we had okay. pretty good growth. Basically double. Yeah. Uh, the first episode is the one that brought them in. 42% of our listeners started from that episode. Really? Wow. Yeah. I'm, they, these I'm, are completionists, I'm telling you. I know. <laughs> that's why I'm surprised because I, the way I process podcasts is all like start listening to somebody and then maybe i'll go back and listen to like you know 10 or so old ones but mostly i just start listening and then just go forward you know go week yeah to week or yeah whatever. yeah i That's very fair. rarely go the full way through somebody's back catalog yeah i don't do that i'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't have the patience yeah exactly so, so I don't, yeah how does it feel to have gone global? We were streamed in 35 countries with United States as our top country at that 58%. Makes that mm-hmm. makes sense. What's the, what's the smallest one? Does it give you a full breakdown? Uh, I don't know. Uh, number one, oh, United States. Number two, Canada. Number three, United Kingdom. Four, Sweden. Five, Australia. Oh, Sweden. I'm surprised wonder. Sweden ahead of Australia because the language yeah. barrier, but. I guess Swedes speak a lot of English. English. Yeah. 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 I mean, Pierre. Yeah, Yeah. true. Maybe that's why, because we had Pierre on. Yeah. He brought everybody in. Says your listeners have good taste, obviously. So what else are they into? Ooh, green suitors. Your your listeners' top podcast genres were comedy, leisure, and arts. Okay. Yeah. And the top uh, listeners' top music genres were rock pop and contemporary country don't know what that is but it sounds awful <laughs> so they're going like, over country fans what why do they say contemporary country that just means like current country yeah which is even worse <laughs> right? your listeners told your friend your friend their friends about you your podcast was shared 70 percent with a direct link 17% on Instagram and 13% on text. Ah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the text people. It's nice. That's nice. What do you think the most shared episode that we have was? Episode 000. No, 57. <laughs> the one was Suman. Suman. Oh, with Suman. People yeah, like the Suman, Suman episode. Huh. And we're, don't worry, people, we're getting to the end. Your podcast rating was 4.9 out of 5. Damn it. Green Suiters podcast got 5. Did they really? I think so. Did they say what the math is behind that? What's the math? I don't know. I got to know. What can we do to improve? I don't know. So our listeners grew 151%. Streams grew 286%. Followers grew 290%. 
and minutes created grew 22%. So we did, we had more podcasts this year or longer or something. Took less time off. Oh, I can't forget about your biggest fans. You're a top 10 podcast for 577 people. Cool. Cool. We're a top five podcast for 401 people. Whoa. And we are the number one podcast for 125 listeners. Really? That's not bad. Huh? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. yeah. We're getting there. Those people and... have great taste. Oh, that's that's stupid. That wasn't relevant. 83% of the people joined us for the first time this year. And now we're zooming out. And that's irrelevant information. So yeah, I thought it was just kind of interesting to pop into that, yeah, tell cool. people a little bit about the back end of the podcast. And uh, oh, sweet. Yeah, we got some exciting yeah. stuff. Quick little story about the, the you know, year and wrap for Spotify. So Sophie's... Oh, yeah total hours was like orders of magnitude more than <laughs> any other person that I have ever met. And would you like to guess why I'm talking like 10 X, the biggest number you've ever heard. She listens while she sleeps. Yeah. She has like ocean yeah. noises or something, right? Rain sounds every yeah. night rain sounds. So she's doing oh. like eight hours every single night. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. All right. Did you have anything in your Spotify rap that shocked you? We're not going to dwell on this, but anything that was interesting at all they had seen? No, because I don't use Spotify for anything. Okay. Derek? Yeah. <laughs> I don't use Spotify. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a YouTube music guy, you know? like That's fair. Like, That's fair. I'm loyal to YouTube. I mean, you're already paying for it. You might as well use it, right? Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, then... And my, I was going to say my Spotify rap that's like, oh, the song you listen to the most it said you listen to it 11 times. I'm like, I guarantee I've listened to one song more than 11 times this year. I don't yeah. I don't really trust the stats that they're giving. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Except well, the ones they gave us about the podcast. Of course. Yeah, those ones are 100%. All the good ones are 100% accurate. Yeah, but the bad absolutely. ones. Absolutely. Well, uh, so with the new year, obviously, we, we should address this. We took a little time off of uh, sure right around christmas and in new yeah. year's and stuff but we're yeah. back baby oh we're back uh, and we're starting the year off strong we're not gonna not gonna re- release the details yet got some but we've got, got some, some heavy hitters of guests coming up soon people you're definitely gonna want to tune in for all within the first several uh podcast episodes so yeah, patrons pretty, pretty, pretty rapid fire Apparently, we need to have uh, De- um, Suman back on. I know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. We can do that. Uh, so, patrons, be on the lookout for uh, notes coming through Patreon or posts coming through Patreon so you can get your questions in that you want to ask those guests, whatever you want. We're going to have a good time. But yeah. so I wanted to recircle back on this. I'm sure you guys didn't do it. So, I'm going to say, say it to make you guys feel. Uh, bad the holiday thing that we wanted to do where you guys were going to go out to youtube small youtube channels and leave a nice encouraging message and whatnot did you guys find any well zach Zach didn't didn't. no of course not (laughs) i found that channel when we were live on air though i didn't leave a comment because i'm a bad person but at least we gave a little (laughs) shout out on the podcast i bet derek did it derek's i found someone i'm trying to i'm trying to find where i found where i left it at okay we don't gotta read read the comment but you know interrupt me if you end up finding it so similar to the spotify wrapped i wanted to do a year in review for just us i want to know zach what went well what Uh didn't go well Uh maybe what are you changing this year or like Maybe yeah. tools, techniques, new projects that you want to try. Um, okay. So, I mean, I think clearly what's been going well for me lately is le- le- leaning into tech-related builds. For sure. Um, no doubt. Yeah. So, that's that's been good for me. I've, I've really enjoyed that. Um, it's obviously been good for the channel. So, that's very encouraging. Yeah. Um, in terms of what hasn't gone well, I would say that I 
haven't gotten to do nearly as much woodworking as I would like to do. And that's something that okay. I would like to address going into, uh, into 2024. I'd like to spend more time and more time blending the two a little bit less 3d printing, hopefully, and a little bit more focusing on, uh, what, what kind of, I don't know, gets me going a little bit more. Right. I mean, it makes sense though. The, the three D printer, if I'm not mistaken, was new for you in 23, wasn't it? Totally, totally. And I don't get me wrong. Like, I love the three D printers. It gives me a new avenue of construction to explore, um, and it simplifies the building process, especially for small things. It's like yeah. it's absolutely game changing. I'm not crapping on it, and it, it's I'm almost like you know like a victim of success in, in some ways. It's like the three D printing videos have done so well. I just haven't been able to pursue enough of my other passion, which is you know traditional woodworking or you know air quotes traditional woodworking. Yeah, or pro <laughs> woodworking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's something we've talked about in the past. Is like. We, you got to go after what is enjoyable to you at that time. So like when you got the 3D yeah. printer, like why wouldn't you go after it? Because you're extremely passionate. About, not that you're yeah. not yeah. passionate about it now, but like, yeah, you know, you got to create what you're excited about. Exactly. Exactly. And then was there another portion to that question that I skipped over? You said things uh, that went well and that haven't gone well? or that, Yeah. You know, like what change? are you changing next year? Like, what are you going to do different that you're like, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm now going to do this or like. I think we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast in the past, but I think the biggest thing that I'm going to change is quality over quantity. Yeah. I'm not going to constrain myself to any particular timeline. I'm not going to say I'm going to post one video a month or one video a week or whatever. Nope. I'm going to post a video when it's good. And yeah. You know, if that takes two months, great. If it takes a week, great. It's it's going to just be more focus on quality. And, and, you know, like I've been kind of following that philosophy, I'd say, for the last maybe four or five months. And it's paid off for me. So I'm going to continue forward with that. Yeah. But it's, yeah. you know, definitely a change from the going into the start of 2023. I was like, oh, I'm going to do, you know, a video every two weeks or something like that. And I've I've kind of abandon that line of thinking <laughs> yeah and it also doesn't allow you to let like your creative freedom go so like if you're on some yeah. tight deadline you're like man i really wanted to get into this woodworking project but i won't be able to bang it out okay i'll just do some exactly. 3d printing thing yeah and you end up making like these like filler things that you're not super excited about which yeah. again kind of echoes what you were saying earlier like you have to be excited about the things you're doing and i'm legitimately all the things i have planned for the future i'm very excited about i don't know how long they're going to take some of them might take you know a month to complete but that's that's what it is right and i mean honestly if people wait a little bit to see your videos and whatnot they're gonna be like oh i haven't seen one i haven't seen one. Oh man it's gonna you be know, exciting yeah. yeah i think that and that's the thing that i used to i used to think that I had to post all the time to be like top of mind for people. But I think it's actually more advantageous to be a creator who puts in the time to make things that people are really excited about consistently. And then like you're saying, people like, Oh, I haven't seen a Zach builds video in, you know, a month and a half or whatever. Right. But when one does come out, people are like legitimately excited about it because the quality is there rather yeah. than just trying to shovel videos out. I mean, I know creators that I all, I really enjoyed watching their videos. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like every three or four days you put out a video. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Every yeah. other video is a 10 now. All, right. all my favorite creators are just people who post inconsistently, but they bring the quality Same. every time they do. Same. So, yeah. Like, it's I not like, a, oh, well, they're always every Saturday or the every every other Thursday afternoon. Like, I don't know when they're going to post a video. I log in and it's like, it's, you get that dopamine hit. It's like when it went in the lottery, you're like, oh, sweet, new video. Yeah. I actually saw a creator that I like and he does post, on, he posts like every Monday religiously. And he put out a, uh, uh, you know, like a community post or whatever sure. on, he's like, um, and just said, like, reiterating that he's going to post once a week for, you know, he was like, there's 52 Mondays in the year. I'm going to post 52 times this year. I'll see you guys there. I was like, 
I, I feel kind of bad reading that because he's a really good creator. I like his video. I most I sure. do watch most of his videos, but I was like, I just I don't know. I felt bad for somebody who's still kind of stuck in that mindset of gotta gotta get the content yeah. out no matter what on a schedule. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I, I I too have abandoned that. I yeah. I will put out a video when I'm ready. And on honestly, like we talked about, it's no surprise. I'm also going to wait until I have a, a suitable sponsor yeah. that makes it financially worthwhile to launch the video. And if I got to wait a little yeah. bit, like that's fine. Yeah, it gives me the, it gives me more time to fine tune older videos and sure. get those performing well so that yeah. I get paid more. Like yeah. I, it's the reality of what it is. Like I'm not shy about it. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. know what? It, I think uh, one of my best financially performing videos this year will be one of the like the worst brand deals from a numbers point of view. Right. Because it was the the PS2 video that I did in December. I took a like a, a CPM deal on that because there was like oh. there was nothing else, and it was a relatively low CPM. But I was like, I think this video is going to do well. And it was, yeah, it was just like very easy thing. So it's like, I don't know, like, like sometimes you get CPMs and you're like, awesome. I'm going to get like a hundred dollars per thousand views on the video. You're like, that's amazing. Like, that's like, you know, kind of like top tier. Yeah, that's that's not not, very nice. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Most people, (laughs) most people are not getting that. But you do get deals like that occasionally. Right. Um, and uh, this was definitely not one of those, but it was a it was a good video, so it, it turned out to I don't know turned out to work. So now I'm like now I'm even thinking going forward. It's like I'm not even necessarily going to hold out for the best brand deal sometimes. Yeah, like I might just uh, choose to work with more flexible sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the time you get the, those those high cpm brand deals they have the most requirements they want you to post on a certain day and it's like blah 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 if you're willing to take a little bit of a pay cut you can work with more flexible sponsors so that might be something i'm exploring going forward too so you'd say that would be one of the biggest things you're changing is you are going to try to let yourself drive the the ship more than external influences yes yeah definitely makes sense i like that i like that yeah so last thing i'll ask you what uh-huh. new things, maybe tools, techniques, or whatever, do you yeah. want to try? The aforementioned laser cutter. Laser. Okay. <laughs> um, now, do you think it's going to happen in 24? Pretty confident? Yeah, I think it'll happen in 24. Whether or not this specific one happens, I think I'm. I, if it doesn't, then I'll just go. Sorry. Uh, no, I'll good. just go get another one. Um, yeah, because yeah, I don't know. It's something I'd like to try. I want to try as many different things as I can. Right. But, yeah. It's, and, I don't know. It's, it's variety is the spice of life. Right. And I love learning new topics. So for me, it keeps right. me engaged. And like, think of it this way. How freaking cool is it that you get paid as right? your job to explore this? Like, oh, I got this idea in my head. Like, ah, oh, that's kind of cool. What if I yeah. tried to do it with a laser? I don't know how to use a laser. Well, Zach, we're going to pay you for, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, what am I, what pay you to explore an idea? Yeah. Like that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's honestly, it's a, it's a dream come true really. Right. So yeah. 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 All over uh, and then in terms of other like specific techniques, like there's all these little things that I want to drill down into, but I don't know. I, I haven't thought too far about it like in terms of like other little things i'm sure i'll kind i usually find those things as i go like i found micro soldering because i wanted to do the nintendo 64 project sure and sure. i wasn't planning on that it just kind of happened that way and then i found the electroplating thing that we've talked about ad nauseum for the last few episodes so i won't right. go into too much but there's just these little things that you stumble upon and because i'm in the position i'm in i'm like yeah i'm gonna spend two weeks learning how to do this obscure thing it's it's exciting though. I mean, always go be going after something you're excited to do. Because if I if you have to do the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to become laborious and annoying, and you're not going to enjoy making these videos. Like you're always going to find some creative thing to chase and learn, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Like if you're building kitchen cabinets every single week, you'd be like, this is awful. I'm not building another freaking kitchen cabinet. At least for my personality type, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there who who would enjoy that. Or at least I hope there are because there's a heck of a lot of people out there building kitchen cabinets. So right. I hope they're they're enjoying it while they do it. But for me, Oof. yeah. yeah, It's not, not me. So much. Yeah. Well, Derek, did you find the uh, the creator? Yes. Uh, so there's one creator that I came across this last month. All right. Uh, it was it was Christmas themed, but um, I thought it was really interesting. It's called uh, their makers. Oh, Michael workshop. and Brooke. I know them. Okay. Yeah. So they had a little short that came out where they made a gingerbread house, a mansion using a laser cutter. So they baked these flat sheets of gingerbread and laser cut out the whole yeah. house. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. This thing is going viral. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Fun fact about, I'm, I'm going to feel really bad if, if I'm saying this wrong. I believe it is Michael and Brooke that run it. It's called Maker's Workshop. Yeah. I, I believe. So they were actually in when I first that started Instagram. Michael, Michael and Brooke. Okay. Yeah. They were actually in when I first started Instagram, one of those like pod things with me oh, where you're supposed cool. to like, like each other's stuff or whatever. So I, yeah. I've known them for a really long time. Yeah. They're awesome. Okay. They're super yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, then they're pretty small still like 15,000 subscribers. Yeah. 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 Well, Someone yeah. I'm going to go check Instagram. it out. Is that you know Al what? Uh, Al Roker, where? No, something popped oh. up on Derek's screen. I thought it was Al oh. Roker. Oh, that's, that's one not of him the videos. Yeah. It was, I, know, my screen is about an inch big. So I was like, <laughs> is, that, is that Al Roker? But yeah. Um, people talk trash about, you know, engagement pods and stuff like that for good reason. It's not a, it's not an effective tactic if you're looking to grow on social media. However, it's a great way to make friends early on as a creator. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how I got to know. Who am I trying to, uh, what other, uh, Daniel Dunlap from, uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's got the AWP. We were in one. Sure. That's how I yeah. knew him. Um, I'm trying to think of any, other people off the top of my head. I wonder how many of these engagement pods there are out there. Do you think there was just like, because there's not that many woodworking creators. And, you know, there's like 15 or 10 to 15 people in each one of these. Yeah, I don't know. But see, I've gotten to the point now where like the people that I would talk to on a regular basis, I'm just like, just text me. Don't like. <laughs> yeah. Don't send me a message on Instagram because it's I'm not going to get to it. It's going to be annoying. That is the worst way to get in touch with me, everybody. Oh, I know. Yeah, we were trying to plan our next guest, and I, I sent a, yes. a message to this person, and they're like, oh, yeah, that works. And I was like, all right, just going to confirm that it works with Zach, and like nothing from Zach for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really bad about Instagram these days. You know what? I think I have like like PTSD, like just from the burnout of Instagram. It's just every time I go on that app, I just think about like, oh, I'm trying to like post daily and like keep up and respond oh to every God, comment, respond to every DM. Yeah. So yeah, I know I'm dialing it back personally with the Instagram and all that. I'm going to focus on the YouTube side of it this next year. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. I was so that was the thing I was going to say of that I'm changing next year. Yeah. I'm really not putting any weight effort into Instagram whatsoever. Yeah. Because it it's it, nothing comes out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. my I think I, so much better time is so much better well spent on YouTube where it's it's generating the vast, overwhelming majority of the revenue for the business. Why would I not yeah. focus on that? Yeah. yeah, I I would say like last year for me it was probably like I don't know, maybe like a 60-40 split between Instagram and really? YouTube. Maybe not even, like at the start of the year. Okay. Like maybe maybe, maybe even that's a bit generous. Maybe it was more like a 75-25 split. Okay, okay. Um, but of a much smaller pie. And then sure. I kind of gave up on Instagram and I was able to, because I had all that extra time, it was and spread so thin. Right. I was able to focus on YouTube and now it's like, I wouldn't, I don't know, like the, the return has just been so much better just dialing in and focusing on one thing. Do one thing really well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of the, the summary of what I'm trying to do next year is yeah. do fewer things better. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is counter to so much advice yeah. of the last five years. Right. right? Like you right. read the, like, you look at like Gary V or something like that. And he basically just says like, grind it out on every single platform 24 <laughs> seven, you know, and it's like, you know, Why? screw all your relationships in real life. Just you got to be on Instagram, TikTok, I don't know, fight dance, all the, every single platform there is. Snapchat. The bike dance? I think that's, I think that's a uh, bike dance is I'm pretty sure Chinese one, but I could be wrong. That's, I think oh that's God. who owns TikTok is bike dance. Oh, oh, is that what it is? It used to be and then it became TikTok or something like that. That tells so, you how old I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it tells you how old I am, too. I keep it up with all the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have kids that educate me on those things. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Fair. That's fair. True. So I guess with the new year for me, so that what I'm changing next year is focusing on one thing doing well. Um, yeah. What went well? YouTube went well. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. I mean, I'm growing on Instagram, but really nothing comes out of it other than a couple of random ad placements or whatever but i mean it's less than five percent of my revenue is from instagram so like in my head i'm like why what why am i bothering yeah yeah it's, so, it's a lot to keep up like are you still daily posting hell no oh okay like because i feel like a, a few months ago you were still daily posting well it's because i started scheduling everything up to yeah. try to boost my Facebook page to get that monetized. And yeah, so I would just yeah. be like, oh, I'll just shoot it to Instagram as well. well and it was just all know. scheduled. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm working on getting my Facebook page monetized and then I'm going to have a third party company just run the whole thing. Have you set that all up? I mean, I know this is a little diversion from the... Dude, I am. I have all of the green check marks. It says yeah. you meet all the standards. You know, you have all the stuff. And then it says... We're unable to monetize your account right now. Really? Please try again later. It's huh. so effing frustrating. That is very frustrating. And good luck getting anybody from, even as a, you know, uh, verified user That's what I'm saying, on verified. Instagram. Yeah, I mean, good luck actually getting a real nothing. human. It means yeah. nothing. It's just a cash grab. So I'm considering deleting my verification thing on Instagram. Like, what I know, does it I matter? think I might too. It, it really doesn't. They made a bunch of promises about what they were going to deliver, and now clearly they're not delivering on those promises. I mean, if y'all aren't getting any anything out of it anyways, it'd be interesting to see what kind of changes occur because of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, truly, like, every month I'll get, like, the notification. It was, like, $16.23 or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, for what? For what? Yeah. Yeah, really, for what? I'm considering. I have one issue with them. That. I have like one tech support issue. I emailed, you know, like my quote unquote representative, and the email I got back clearly did not read my issue. No. It no. was just an automated template thing. And then they followed up. I didn't, I never responded to it. I was like, okay, this is annoying. They followed up a day later and they were like, hey, we saw you didn't respond. Again, clearly a template email. So I responded to that one. Well, yes, your first email didn't address my issue at all. Clearly, nobody read it. And then, again, they sent a template email. I was right. like, okay, screw this. I'm done. <laughs> right. It's, I'm so over it. I'm, I'm done. I already deleted TikTok off my phone. Not even going to bother with that. Yeah. That was a waste of time. Yeah. I mean. That's where I am. That's where you are. Right, did yeah. you delete it? I haven't deleted it, but like, I'm like, what's the, what's the point? I have fun with yeah. it though. Like I created an account for my cats and they post, but that's about it. That's all sure, I do. Oh, like, yeah, no, if you're having fun with it, that's great. But if like, yeah. for me, I was trying to do, you know, business, business, obtain yeah. revenue from it. And it was wasted yeah, time and effort. Absolutely. If you enjoy it, by all means, that's fantastic. Keep doing yeah. it. Find what you can enjoy it. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm not yeah. doing that. Yeah. You know but what? Yeah, I really want to. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's stupid. It drives me nuts. They don't pay you a damn thing. In three years, I made $2,000 from it. Waste of time. <laughs> and how many hours do you think you invested into it? Oh, too much. A lot. 
Yeah. Even yeah. just opening the app, posting, writing a little comment, like tag, stuff like that. Even that is not worth the time that I put into it. Yeah. Yeah. For that return. It's interesting. I'd like to talk to some more uh, successful creators or maybe, you know, more like growing creators on these platforms. Because it seemed like two, three years ago, there was a lot more to be had in terms of brand deals. Yeah. But I've re- I, like I've really stepped back from Instagram and TikTok, so I haven't been seeing like I you know my people aren't banging on my door to get me to do sponsor posts, which is fair enough. I don't really care. But right. I'm curious: is that just like platform wide? Are all creators seeing a drop, or is it like if you're still posting every day, you're still getting brand deals? I have no idea. I think everybody's seeing a drop. Yeah, Everyone's I don't won. see as many p- sponsored things posted. Yeah, I mean, I think about it, when we saw the spike, it was during COVID when everybody's at home on their phones. And uh-huh. Right. Now that yeah, that's yeah. over, everybody's back to life, and that's it's gone back to that pre-COVID. Yeah. So I think it's uh, probably harder to make a living as a creator on Instagram or TikTok. So mm-hmm. if you if you're not enjoying it, then there's not really that much incentive to be there anymore. So it's interesting that you mentioned that because our guest next week is highly, highly focused on Instagram mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. doing it successfully. Yeah. So she we're going to talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to talk to this person and be like, let's be honest. How are you doing this? Like, yeah. where are you getting revenue from? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good to do. Uh, I've been to. Because I'll be learning something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll all be well, learning I mean, something. There's ways to make money but they just weren't compatible with you know like i don't know if you have some sort of product or something you sell maybe or a course or something like that right. maybe there's ways to make money that way but just from straight revenue uh advertising revenue it didn't seem like there was too much yeah 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 which so it's interesting that you you mentioned that it made me think of i have to report back since changing my website and this is not sponsored over to shopify yeah my sales have been exponentially higher really? i think it's because it's so like frictionless you go on the website yeah. you add it to the cart and it's like boom you're ready to go my other site i don't think was as smooth it was like a little clunkier yeah it's crazy is it too soon or do you have like a, a number one item already there's something that's oh, just yeah. like blowing everything else out of the water uh well the problem is a lot of the um Let's see. A lot of the ones on my website are free, so it would be like the top product or whatever is is a free one, one, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know if I have the ability to to do it. Analytics. That might take too long. Yeah, maybe. We can talk about it next week. Uh, The the most popular one is the... Not today. I want to go... Can I do all time? Uh, last 12 months. The most popular one is the table saw router table. So that's a free oh, yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's the one that I have that is paid is the, um, sorry, stand by. Color code your thumbnail so the the paid ones are one color and the unpaid ones have a different. No, background. I'm on like the the what you call it. Uh, my top one is the Plan Master Bundle. Oh, uh, okay. So that's all your right. plans for. So yeah, I'm guessing some sort of pretty ridiculous bundle. It's like a hundred bucks for all of them. Yeah, yeah. And this isn't a bad deal. No, you get like 50 what? plans, but I think you get like 25 or 30 paid plans. So okay. it's a huge yeah. savings. Right. But, uh, do you add yeah. to that as time goes on? Like if somebody buys the master plan thing and you release new plans, do they get them? Ooh, like retroactively, like if you bought it a year ago? Yeah, yeah. No. It's like a, oh, okay, okay. No. Interesting. Well, then I, I got to wait 10 option. years before I buy it. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, I'll like slowly increase the price as you get more and more in there. Oh, damn it. You want to cool. do a volume for each year. Right. Oh, right. yeah, true. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, anybody selling plans to plan bundles? 
so great. That was one that Matt from MWA told me about. He's like, dude, you got to do bundles. Everybody buys the bundles. And he's not wrong. Wow. I'm so glad to be able to start the new year. The website is done. It's out of the way. And I can focus on creating new stuff this year. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you're excited to create? Yeah. So I wanted to create a miter saw station. I wanted to create a router table. Mm-hmm. the router table is like 90, 95% designed. But then I was like, this kind of like we talked about, you got to chase what you're interested in. I was like, I don't want to build that router table. Now I don't want to build the miter saw station now because so, so many of the projects that I've right. So many of the projects that I've done recently have been, like I said, I'm like, Oh, this was so big other than the chessboard that I finished. I mean, mm-hmm. they've all been huge projects. And I was like, I got to do something a little smaller. So I think this is the hardest thing to make. And it's a huge pain in the ass is chairs. Yeah. Now, like every year or so, I try to challenge myself to do chairs again because it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do my take three at building chairs. And I'm going to do an Adirondack chair. Oh, nice. Yeah, but it's going to have like the like the curved back slats and stuff. It's not going to be yeah. flat. It's going to yeah, have like yeah. some like compounding curves and stuff in it. And I'm nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge for sure. There's going to be a lot of cursing, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> My problem with videos. So like I love that. I would I I really want to do some outdoor chairs this yeah, year. It's on my list too. But I can't think of how I would get people to click on that video. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know what yet. I mean? Yeah, yeah. You think there's a better time of year to post outdoor furniture or just any time of year? Probably spring. Springtime? Yeah, yeah I assume spring Early probably spring. the best. That'd be an actually interesting question to really analyze if seasonality matters that much. My cornhole board video has huge seasonality. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. In spring? spring, summertime, it goes up, and then once it gets cold out, it's dead. Okay, all right. It's interesting, huh. but so I'm I'm making the plans with it. I designed it in Fusion. That was a that was a struggle. Compounding curves and stuff on like I can't even imagine doing this on SketchUp. It would have been a disaster. Were you using the 3D sketch feature? Because I imagine that would make it a little easier. Oh, uh, what do you mean 3D sketch feature? Like you can actually do a sketch in 3D. Oh no. Yeah. So what yeah, had... it's something I found out recently. I didn't know either until I was like trying to do a specific shape and somebody was like, Oh yeah, you can add a third dimension to your sketch and then connect the points. What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nuts. I'll have to Google that and learn about that. Mm-hmm. But uh no, what I had done is I I've I was doing this feature called canvassing, which is basically when like you're drawing a specific profile, you can like import a photo. And then you're like, I know that this specific dimension on this photo is like two inches and then it'll perfectly scale that photo. So then I can be like, okay, so the chair needs to be at this angle. And this is kind of like where the seats go, but then I can make everything else myself. So basically I'll get like the, the dimensions of the seat and the angle and everything. Right. But gotcha. then everything else I can kind of go off and do it on my own. It's going to look similar to a regular Adirondack chair, but with a little bit of my own design to it. Yeah, so sweet. Yeah. Not it's branching off you, too much. I, if Sonny you mentioned that canvassing feature, I was using that recently because my friend, uh, they were asking me to make something for a movie prop. Um, yeah. And they sent me some concept art of what it was supposed to look like. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I just imported it into Fusion, <laughs> drew the shape over top of it. And I was like, okay, everything's scaled. They like they said it needs to be 19 inches by 14 inches. So then I just scaled it to match that. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is like the easiest thing in the world. Right. The backpack from a few weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. I'm about to... I, probably going to start making the first one tomorrow. Uh, Ooh, yeah. that'll be exciting. But yeah, I mean, that canvassing feature is, is cool. I've gotten pretty familiar with, with fusion and how to do everything. And so I'm making the plans for it. And I was actually talking, I talked to several people today and I had a call with uh, Mike from Woodshop Mike. 
uh, about oh, nice. plans and stuff. And we were talking and he's like, he's like, you realize that like most of the detail that you're putting in your plans is like, it's completely unnecessary and a waste of time. Really? Like what? Yeah. So like I would yeah. do like the step one, cut down three boards about this length. Step two, glue them together. Yeah. Step three, once the glue's dried, trim off the end so it's the perfect size. He's like, just put, make a tabletop that's 24 by 36. Yeah, yeah. I have thought like, about yeah, that. Like, sense. <laughs> I Because I was thinking for my, I did a speaker project and I was thinking, I, I think I backed off it, but I was going to make a set of plans for it. So I started drafting out like a, a set of plans and i was like you know mm -hmm. it'll be really easy and then i was like well it really depends how granular you get at each yeah. step like how much hand holding do you do that's what i'm struggling with yeah so it's like so, so it's good to hear mike being like yeah just have a, start with a panel that's this big or make a tabletop this big it's like yeah. okay and he he makes plans for a lot of other creators yeah and i've yeah. i've gone and bought plans just for the sake of research bought plans from five or 10 other prominent creators and none of them really do like the step-by-step -step thing. Really? Okay. Interesting. But it might was... be like, you know, first, you know, attach the legs to the apron. Now that that's on, put the tabletop, you know, like something like yeah. that. So like an order of operations, or if it's a plywood project, it would basically be like, here's your cut list. Okay. Now mm -hmm. put piece a on piece B. Now mm -hmm. put piece C on because if you put piece C on first, then you like can't get to the other ones. Like, but that's easy because it's on fusion. You can just press the little eyeball thing and make that piece disappear. And right. so you can make plans like that. No problem. Yeah. But if you're like trying to say, okay, cut this panel now, cut the groove. It's like, well, you have to make a copy of that piece. One that has the groove, one that doesn't have the groove on. It. Yes. Yeah. I was doing exactly that. I was yeah. like, this is so tedious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so interesting so considering hiring somebody to make my plans so that's what i was talking to mike about about today. i saw your community post about it where you were like you said we're hiring which i thought was kind of funny i, I considered you, trolling that post but <laughs> i was like okay. do you know how many and i even put on there like yes i'm aware of what fiverr is no yeah. need to tell me <laughs> how many people responded on instagram and be like have you have you looked at fiverr Oh my God. So I'm, so I'm not hiring somebody for $3 to make God awful plans. I want them to be good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing. I oh. really don't enjoy making the plans. Oh, so no. I'd be curious to see what plans you get for $5. Oh, yeah. 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 It'll be like, well, let me know if, uh, if you find would. anybody good. Cause maybe I could throw them a little bit of business too. Yeah. Because now, like I'm, like I, I want to make a set of nightstands. I bought a little up in Fusion today. It took me like an hour and a half to create like a perfectly detailed model of yeah. what I want these nightstands to look like. And then, especially if you already have it made in Fusion, you just send them the Fusion file and be like, "Can you just make plans from this?" That's exactly, going to cut yeah. three quarters of their workload off. Yeah, exactly. So you have all the dimensions right there. It's super easy for them. So if you find somebody who's good, maybe maybe we'll share them. I know the guy who does Keith Johnson's and uh, Bourbon Moths. He literally, like, uh, Jason doesn't 3D model any of his stuff. Yeah. Uh, this guy's name is Brett. He literally will just look at Jason's videos and th 3D model it in Fusion himself and then make the plans for Jason and just send it to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, like, that's that's a perfect case scenario i personally like to work off plans when i'm building something mm -hmm. i like to have all the schematics and know like oh here's an idea of what pieces i can get out of each board i yeah. like that but not everybody does yeah true but whew. Yeah. Well, well we got a lot we got a lot of other things i'm sure we can talk about but we are over time we're yeah. gonna do that in the after show and okay. in the after show we'll reveal what our uh, our next guest is nice as well as a myriad of other things so uh without further ado we're gonna head over to the after show everybody thank you so much for listening we will catch you next week with our regular cadence we're back on track we're not canceled this year <laughs> we got renewed <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking we, we pay to be on the internet <laughs> i we do They're canceling us <laughs> we do well you never know that yeah. Well, all right.
everybody, thanks again. We'll catch you next week. See you, everybody. See ya. We may or may not have Jake Busey next week. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that. Busey. After the silence, I'll be like, be a nice little, little uh, Easter egg for anybody who listens the whole way through. <laughs>